what is up guys it is Bucky and welcome to your 13th objective sheet tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be learning a few more tricks with the for loop and also I'm going to be teaching you guys an awesome function that's built into objective C it's probably the best function yet um, it's a function that you know we've been making programs where we just type a bunch of stuff in the command line and it runs it's like a big old calculator but we're finally going to be building a program with user interaction where they can type something and they can determine the outcome of the program so I know you're like come on just get started already well okay talk me into it so let's go ahead and we need two variables uh, we need int i and this is going to be the counting variable for the loop and we also need uh, int called user num and this is going to be this variable user num is going to store the number that they type in and what this program is going to do is it's just going to loop through and output numbers before but we're going to ask the user how many numbers do you want to output so let's go ahead and do that right now put ns log and all this is going to be right here is a little prompt so let's go ahead and give them a prompt so they actually know what's going on say enter a number and and I will print it out and make sure you have a couple typos in there or else it won't work I'm just kidding it actually will but you know just thought it would be funny Un anyway so let's go ahead now the next function I'm gonna tell you guys is called scan f and scan f is a built-in function so we don't need to build it later on objective C gave this function to us and what it does is it takes the input from the keyboard and it's a way that the user can interact with your program so before we go ahead and use this function you need to give it two um, criteria to meet the first criteria or the parameter I guess you would say is what type of data are you going to be storing so remember don't put an at sign for this an at is for objective C object when you don't put an at sign it's a C string or it's a C you know you guys don't really need to know this is from another language earlier on that they took this function from but anyways go ahead and put percent i so what we're telling first is alright this user is gonna enter a number now and it's gonna be an integer number so we got that taken care of now your computer or program needs to know alright once they enter this number what variable am I supposed to store it in well we want to store it in user num and one other thing you have to do is you have to put in ampersand or uh, and sign before it now I know you guys don't know what this means yet but it's actually it has to deal with pointers in memory and stuff and I'm not going to be talking about it to you guys in this tutorial but remember when you're using scanf drop the at sign and add the and sign the ampersand before the variable name and I'll tell you guys I'll teach you guys about pointers and memory and all that stuff later but for now we're just learning about the function so after they enter a number it's gonna store that number in variable user num so now we can call our for loop just like we did before so let's go ahead and put four and we started out i equals one that's why we needed that i before you should you guys should know how to make a for loop by now and now instead of i is less than a hundred or something just put i is less than or equal to user num so it's going to go through the loop however many times they wanted it to and last but not least you guys are probably thinking alright i equals i plus one and this is perfectly fine but let me tell you guys a little trick since i equals i plus one is so common in programming or x equals x plus one or bacon plus bacon plus one equals bacon plus one Objective-C gave you guys something called an increment operator and what it does is it's just shorthand to do I equals I plus one or anything plus one what it does is if you do plus plus I or I plus plus they give you two different options because one people prefer one over the other what it does is it adds one to I and you can only do this with um, numerical like you couldn't do it if your variable was a letter or something it's only with numerical variables such as you know whatever number they enter you can enter you can put I plus plus and automatically adds one to the variable so it's a nice little shorthand of putting I equals I plus one 
it just makes it a whole lot quicker so even though you guys aren't probably used to seeing it like this you will get used to this and by the way this is the common way to do it this is what everyone does in programming world so that's why I'm doing it so now that we got our loop taken care of our new and enhanced loop we can go ahead and just print out ns log and go ahead and put at of course for the ns log put percent i and then just go ahead and press i because the user num isn't going to change it's the i that's going to change so let's go ahead and build and run this and save it and let's see what we got it got an error and it said oh forgot my semicolon right here don't want a memory leak and alright so here's our final program enter a number and I will print it out so what the user would do let me get this right there actually let me get it away from my face enter a number and I will print it out so the user is like alright 21 press enter and so the program prints out 1 through 21 just like that so they can enter any number and let's build and run this again enter a number and I will print it out running um, 34 it go ahead and runs 1 through 34 so this is our first program that we bought that actually took user interaction and we also learned about the increment operator which is going to save us a bunch of time in the future and it just makes it look a whole lot cleaner so for now thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next tutorial